Oh, I haven't made a video in such a long time. But yeah, today we're watching how to win an interstellar war. I don't know what that is, but we'll learn today. I like learning, and I am guess you guys do too if you watch these videos. And yeah, let's watch. Could uh, aliens I... destroy us from light years away? Nah, hmm. Another day real. at the Kurzgesagt Labs, where we answer the most important questions with science. Today, mm. how might civilizations wage war across light years? What kind of devastating weapons could they use? And what would they look like? Meet our two players, a yellow dwarf star system home to a species of primates. Humans, as they call themselves, recently became a technological civilization. They have rockets, nuclear reactors, and memes. How cute. The Smorpions disagree. They reside on a planet around the orange dwarf star HD 40307, 42 light years away. The Smorpion civilization developed earlier than humans, and they have much better technology. They've recently built a Dyson swarm around their star, which gives them near limitless energy. And they noticed humanity, which is unfortunate as the Smorpions are planning a hyperspace bypass through our solar system. So they decided that humanity has to go. Interstellar war is hard, though. Front lines, tactics, and logistics are meaningless at these scales. It's also fought across time. Decades will pass between firing a weapon and learning whether it hit or not. Sending an invasion fleet is futile. Even if the Smorpions travel at a large fraction of the speed of light, the journey to Earth would take decades or even centuries, and humans would have plenty of time to prepare. If you want to learn more about the mind-numbing problem of war between alien civilizations, we made a video about it. But Today, it's not real, we'll help so the Scorpions construct a weapon that is not only extremely long-range and as fast as physically possible, but that will totally destroy everything on Earth. So, nah. But if it comes to that, I'm gonna save everybody because I watched, you know, the Superman movie. I used to watch those, and he'd just fly and save people. So, if that happens, I'm gonna be ready. So, don't worry. This is not. This should not freak you out at all. Okay, I got this. No human survivors will come Relax. to an act of vengeance on Smorp in the future. In Interstellar War, you want to win with one shot. Okay. Our bird scientists have found three Smorpion designs. The Star Laser, the Relativistic Missile, and the mm. Ultra Relativistic Electron Beam. All based on real technologies what if this humans is giving are using real aliens some form actual, like, Let's see how they work. Tips on how to make their bombs. The Star Laser. As an advanced technological civilization, the Smorpions harness the energy of their star by surrounding it with billions of solar power satellites. This Dyson Swarm collects 1% of the star's energy output, a million, billion, billion watts, 50 billion times more than all humanity generates. What if all the power of the Dyson Swarm, all those satellites, were used to create a star laser? Like any laser, the bigger it is, the longer its range. Human-built lasers use small mirrors to focus, so they have short ranges. The Smorpions could turn their entire Dyson Swarm into a collective focusing element a million kilometers wide. The Star Laser has an insane range as a result, enough to focus on target Earth from a distance of over two million light years. Okay, let's shoot it. Countless tiny beams combine into a single huge beam. Laser beams are normally invisible in space, but the star laser is so powerful. Assuming this was real, though, it'd be super freaky. Like, just <laughs> imagine getting one shot. Like, right here, I'm sitting making this video. Then we get one shot out of nowhere. Boom, Earth's gone. Damn, that's crazy. It'd be like that asteroid. Imagine what the dinosaurs were doing. It probably, one of them was, was thinking... Maybe I should go make a move on my on the new girl I met the other day. And then boom, asteroid, boom. You're not seeing your girl again. Or like, it's a lot. Poor dinosaurs though. I don't know if they thought, but if they had thoughts, I feel bad for them. Because imagine, bro, you wake up and a freaking asteroid, you notice it coming down. You can't run. That's your end. Like, no more evolving. She, I'd be mad, 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 too mad to just die like the that. The light scattering off bits of dust and gas in its path makes it clearly visible in the sky. A gigantic column of green light. 
the laser travels at the speed of light, which oddly enough is still pretty slow on a galactic level. It takes a whole day until the laser has left the Scorpion system, shooting into the emptiness between stars. It will travel for decades, occasionally melting the odd bit of interstellar dust or asteroid. 42 years after being fired, it arrives without warning. Humans only notice a weird green glow in the sky, and then they're gone. 1% of the energy of a star concentrated into a beam the diameter of Earth, traveling 42 light years. It burns the exposed See? half of the planet with the... But if I'm still alive in 42 years, I would literally stop this. Like, oh my, bro, you guys, I know you guys watch the Superman movies. They literally, he could, he could stop lasers like this. What, what if we make a superhuman to then defend ourselves against this alien guy? Man, I don't know. We got to stop thinking with science and start using magic. Because if we, if we use magic, obviously we'd stop this. But since we study so much about science, that's not real, obviously we lose track of magic. Because if we do magic, we'd have so many wizards. Imagine I'm like, uh, what's that Harry Potter guy, Gryffindor, I'm, I'm part of those guys. And then they give me a magic wand. I could do what science is doing right now. But these guys are ignoring what's gonna help them in the future. But I don't know, let the aliens come because they obviously don't want a better future. They don't want magic to be exposed to everybody because Hey, what, what if it's used for bad stuff? But then I get attacked for saying this. Yeah, science is not going to get you places, guys. Start studying magic. Intensity of three million suns. The seas burn and evaporate, fires scour the land, and within minutes, Earth's crust begins to melt into a sea of lava. As the planet Man. rotates, it turns into a red hot hell with no trace of life. We could have stopped day, this it's all though. over, and the laser dies down. In another 42 Bruh. years, the Scorpions will know if they've been successful. That's another thing about interstellar war. When you attack, your grandchildren will be the ones to find out if you won. It's like all the bombs from aliens, World War II probably exploding immortal. in the 80s and us only seeing the effect today. Okay, the star laser's extreme range, speed of light attack, and ability to melt down any target make it a premier interstellar weapon. But is this... No, 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 but it actually wouldn't work on some, like, real... Like, uh, thinking, if you think about it, what if it hits another planet in the way? Because it's, if, if it's going to take that many years, another planet will be drifting and then stop the laser's track. Happens. It's not perfect. It's a laser after all, and they don't know. So if they could guide it with, like, some sort of auto autopilot, then yeah, but this time, now it won't Something work. else. The Relativistic Missile. What if, instead of converting the energy of their Dyson Swarm into a laser, the Scorpions used it to shoot a super bullet? A relativistic missile, going as close to the speed of light as possible. This sort of weapon is at the limits of what the Scorpions' technology can handle, as it requires loads of a highly dangerous material, antimatter, the evil twin of regular matter. Humans have only managed to produce a few nanograms of antimatter. With their unlimited energy, Scorpions can manufacture it at an industrial scale to build antimatter rockets. When antimatter and matter are mixed, they annihilate, which in more practical terms means there's a big, big boom releasing gamma rays and plasma. The physics is complicated, but basically, if you have a really strong magnetic field, you can deflect the plasma through a nozzle, just like in the chemical rockets humans use. But it would be much, much faster the fastest rocket possibly, basically. Our relativistic missile is much bigger than a skyscraper. At the bottom is the bell-shaped magnetic nozzle, 100 meters wide. On top of it are 250 floors filled with antimatter and matter ready to annihilate each other. On the top floor is a 300 kilogram projectile looking quite small, about the size of a person. To stop them getting damaged on the way, the missiles have dozens of sacrificial layers that form a Whipple shield. To make sure they do their job, the Scorpions build 1,000 missiles. Let's fire them. Ooh. Okay, this is probably hitting us because the, the other one, I had some hope because it's just one and then it could hit a planet by accident, but <laughs> they're sending a thousand. Yeah, better hope for the best. Yeah, yeah, this is probably it. I mean, if someone's trying to kill you, but might as well, someone like this might as well just let them win because there's no 
running away from uh, a thousand, what, did he say a thousand? Or a million, I don't know how much they're sending, but I'm not running from something that's mixed with matter and antimatter. I lost. Launching all the relativistic missiles is a spectacular event. For a moment, the antimatter engines lighting up outshine their star. Their Sheesh. exhaust is a long trail of brilliant white, and as they accelerate away, they appear redder and redder until they turn invisible. With the extreme amount of energy released by the matter-antimatter reactions, the missiles are accelerated to 99.9999996% of the speed of light. They have effectively infinite range, as there's nothing really to slow them down. They arrive Sheesh. shortly after you can see them. The light from their launch will take 42 years to reach Earth. So, oh, human astronomers might see the flash of the missile's launch, and then a few days later, they'll hit. Not enough time to prepare. Each relativistic missile packs the kinetic energy of a dinosaur killer asteroid, so only one needs to hit. They never reach the ground, disintegrating instead at the edge of Earth's atmosphere. Intense oh, blue flashes set everything on fire. Then, continent-sized fireballs slam down else. on the surface to smash everything into dust, repeatedly until nothing is left but rubble and smoke. So interstellar missiles with unlimited range, minimal warning, and delivering complete destruction of a planet's surface. Nuts. Even with warning, what would you but do? But they are a hassle to build. Is there something else, maybe? The ultra-relativistic electron beam. Humans do funny things to their food to rid it of bacteria and make it safe to eat, like shooting electron beams at strawberries. Small particle accelerators send electrons into the food with an energy similar to the radiation from nuclear reactions. Not enough to burn the food, but deadly to bacteria. Smorpions had the same idea. Hold on, so they're putting chemicals in my strawberries. I'm surprised we're still alive, guys. These guys put so much crap in our food. I'm so disappointed in the stuff I eat. But hey, as long as we're still alive, that's good. Life is beautiful and precious. That's what you should be worried about. But bigger. The main challenge with an electron beam is range. Electrons are negatively charged particles, so they don't want to stay near each other. A regular electron beam together. will quickly spread out, making it harmless. Smorpions need it to cover distances of dozens of light years. So they've used the rules of the universe to trick the electrons by building an ultra-relativistic oh. electron beam, or URAB. What? what it does is accelerate the electrons to 99.9999999999999999998% of the speed of light. Oh, geez, Faster dude. than even the most powerful cosmic rays. The closer something travels to the speed of light, the slower time moves for it relative to the rest of the universe. And since these electrons are moving so incredibly fast, for every second of spreading they experience, over 5 million years pass in real time. A Sheesh. physics trick that lets the beam cross interstellar distances while remaining tightly focused on its target. The biggest particle accelerator on Earth is 27 kilometers long. The Smorpions need one that's over 100,000 kilometers long, a megastructure eight times longer than Earth is wide. It's mostly a tube of magnets holding the beam together until the exit. Like a long trumpet of doom surrounded by an aura of deadly radiation. Yeah, these guys must be losers if you're, if you're focusing all your time and energy and resources into Earth. Bro, Earth is lame. I'm not going to hold you. If you're an alien and you're trying to come conquer Earth, you, you kind of lost it. Bro. You might as well look for other alien planets because what, what do you want on Earth? There's no like okay. There's there's baddies on Earth. I don't know if that's your focus though. But if you if you're not into like women and maybe drinking, and I told you guys drinking is terrible. Never touch alcohol because if you touch alcohol, never step within the radius like two kilometers of me because I'll I'll spark up. I get angry at stuff like this. But aliens, if you come to Earth, it's terrible, man. Take this as some advice. What are you coming to do here? There's, look, we have bad presidents. There's, like, petty wars going on. Like, there's a lot of people doing, like, bad stuff. I don't know, man. I'm not messing with this place that much. Even I don't like it. What are you going to come to do here? Hey, I'm an alien. Hi. 
Yeah, dude, you get ignored probably because it's humans, bro, and these new generations are weird. So yeah, just stay away from Earth. Not gonna lie, it's not even that it's dangerous, it's just corny. Yeah, bro, like, <laughs> that's some good advice. If you come here and you don't heed my words, keep wasting your time. When it's fired, it produces a ruder straight lightning bolt pointed at Earth. Its effects on arrival are less visible than the other weapons. No flashes of light, no massive firestorms, no explosions. It doesn't oh, destroy rocks, it destroys DNA. People get uh. dizzy, then fall sick as their cells are pierced by radiation. You so might I think that a dark bunker this. could save a few humans, but no. The Europe mm. is so penetrating that its effects accumulate to lethal doses even underground over days or weeks. In the end, just like our strawberries, Earth becomes sterile. Simulation results. Hmm, another elaborate animated science explainer by Kostner. That was kind of cool, where we've honestly. Learned a lot. Not sure exactly what. I like this last Luckily, one because the Smorpions don't really exist, but others might. One major downside of all our weapons is that others around the Milky Way could see you firing them, which is not ideal because you don't want to present yourself as a dangerous species and tell everybody where exactly you are. So maybe instead of shouting or shooting out into the universe, the best course of action seems to be to stay relatively quiet for now and observe. Maybe Why one day observe? we'll witness distant stars shooting at each other and be glad we stayed out of it. I'm not gonna lie, bro. If any aliens plan to invade Earth, don't come to Mississippi because you got ops here. Like, you can't just don't come here, bro. Because I'm here and, and if... If I'm here, that means there's danger, bro. Can't stress it enough. Like, I've heard aliens, this and that, but Mississippi, you got ops here. This is for any alien in the solar system. You got ops here, bro. I don't care who you are, how strong you are, bro. Come to Mississippi, we got a problem. You could go to, I don't know, anywhere else but Mississippi, bro. Because I, when I get angry, bro, I get angry. Like, it's so crazy because... I just can't explain it. Just come see for yourself. I dare you. But yeah, you boys have a nice day.